Now we will cover very important interview questions related to closures which is asked a lot of times in interviews and you know even very senior developers they pull their hairs right when they see like things are not working as expected and you know that is because we don't understand what happens behind the scenes. So now let us see these examples and you will be better in your interviews I am telling you just keep watching. So suppose we have a function over here okay let's call it x and we have a var i is equals to let's say 1 over here okay and we have a set timeout let's create a set timeout okay it takes a callback function and we are just trying to access this i right this i inside set timeout nothing else and we are just logging this and it also takes a timer right and let us give one second timer that is 1000 millisecond over here so what do you expect if I run this program if I run this function what do you expect to see in the console so many of you already know that it is easy right it prints i value of i 1 after one second right so if we run this code so see after one second it prints one if I do it 3 over here 3000 Okay, it will print after 3 seconds, 1, 2 and 3. So it will print after 3 seconds the value of i. Many people think that this set timeout runs over here itself. No, you will pull your hairs if I show you something. So even if I show you, okay, even if I show you, suppose if I print Namaste JavaScript over here, right? <laughs> so what will happen? Okay, so yep. So what do you expect to see now? So many developers will think that JavaScript will wait for 3000 milliseconds over here and then will print uh, i and then the value of Namaste JavaScript. No man. See, if I run this code, if I run this code, it prints Namaste JavaScript, then waits for 3000 milliseconds and run that function and prints the value of i. <laughs> right? So, you know, many people think that JavaScript set timeout will wait over here no javascript does not wait for anyone okay so just like we say right time and tide waits for none just like javascript also waits for none okay <laughs> nice quote right time tide and javascript waits for none <laughs> i know that's a bad joke but <laughs> yeah so what set timeout actually does is how and why this is printing like this is because these see this function first of all let me tell you an important thing this function forms a closure okay so this function remembers the reference to i okay this reference to i and it is like forms a closure so wherever this function goes it takes the reference of i along with it okay that's what closure is right and what does this set timeout do is it takes this callback function and stores it into some place okay and attaches a timer to it let me tell you that it takes this callback function and it attaches a timer of 3000 milliseconds to it and it stores it somewhere and the javascript proceeds right it does not wait for anything it just goes to the next line and prints namaste javascript okay that's how javascript works and once that timer expires once that 3000 millisecond is done right that timer expires it takes that function okay puts it again to the call stack and runs it that's how set timeout work okay and we will go into more details in event loop callback queue those things come into picture but we'll go dive deep into it later but for now just understand set timeout takes this callback function attaches a timer and when the timer expires it like calls that function that's how and javascript does not wait at that point of time itself right while you see this set timeout statement it does not wait there actually okay it just go, goes on and runs the whole code so it just prints the namaste javascript and goes on that's it that's it and it's it's somehow somewhere else uh, stores and waits for the timer to expire something like that now this is also many developers understands and can crack but now what I will show you will like you will pull your hairs okay literally you will pull your hairs because that most developers are confused about. So suppose we are given a problem to 
print in the console one two three four five after each and every second okay something like that okay one after one second two after two seconds three after three seconds four after four seconds some like this till five how would you do it so i know many of you cool developers who are watching right now what they will do is they will just quickly write a for loop right <laughs> that is what we use right i'll tell you and you will just write where is equals to one and you will run this from one to five right one to less than equal to five and you will do a i plus plus and what you will do inside the loop you will put this set time out right okay it's easy right we can just do it like this uh, let me just remove this i now we no longer need this i and then what you will do so over here i i value will be 1 2 3 4 5 so it will print 1 2 3 4 5 and 2 like print it after each and every second what generally developers will do they will just put a i into 1000 easy right done we are done with our code right it will, it will, uh, and how this will behave, it will print Namaste JavaScript, then it will like go on and uh, this, when the value of i will be 2, it will set the timer of 2000 and it will like log 2, then 3, then 4, then 5 and that's how it is and that's how it is not, okay? It does not behave that way. It behaves very differently, okay? And I, if I'll show you the output of this code, you will like pull your hairs. So I'll show you the output of the code that will be very interesting. Okay. <laughs> so let me just run this code now. So if I run this code, so it prints Namaste JavaScript and then six and then six and then six. And why, why it is printing six? It printed in the correct order, right? It printed after one second, it printed six after two seconds, six, 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 like this. <laughs> After seeing JavaScript behave like this, many developers want to like crash their screen. But that's not the case. Let us see. Let us find out. And let us see why this is working this way. Right? So, it is working this way because of the closure. Okay? So, if you understand closures properly, you will be able to understand why it is printing 6 over here like this. So, remember what happens when a closure is formed? A closure is like function along with its lexical environments, right? So even when function is taken out from its original scope, right? If it is executed in some other scope, still it remembers its lexical environment, right? It can access to those variables uh, of its lexical scope, right? So what will happen when the set timeout takes this function and stores it somewhere and attaches a timer so that function remembers the reference to i. So let me make things clear. I have told you in the closure video also that it remembers the reference to i, not the value of i. It reference to i. Many developers get confused here. So when the loop runs the first time, so it like kind of makes a copy of this function, attaches a timer and also remembers the reference of i. And similarly, these five copy of these functions all of them are pointing to same reference of i, right? They are pointing to same reference of i because the environment for all of these functions are same, right? All of these copy of set timeout callback functions, the reference to that i, right? It, it refers to the same memory space, right? So that was the first thing. The second thing is that JavaScript does not wait for anything, remember? So it does not wait for anything. It will run the loop again and again. Okay. It will just quickly uh, push that, like store that function, set timeout will store that function, all these five functions and JavaScript will move on, right? It does not wait for those timer to expire, right? So it will print Namaste JavaScript and when the timer expires, it is too late. It is too late and the value of i, because the loop was constantly running, right? It was one, two, three, four, five, six. So the i value became 6, okay, this i value became 6 and when this callback function runs, by that time, the value of i, this where i is 6, okay, in the memory location, it is 6. So that is why it prints 6 every time because all of these callback functions, all of these copy of these functions, all of these 5 functions are referring, this i is referring to the same spot in memory. And that is the same variable, this variable, which has now run five times and its value because of this increment has gone to six. 
So if we try to retrospect that why it is behaving this way, then we get to know that it is because this i for each and every copy of the function is referring to the same spot in memory that is i, this i, okay, which has now become 6, right? Uh, because the loop was continuously running by the time this callback function gets a chance to execute right by that time this i value has been changed because of this loop to 6 right so the problem lies over here in this i so how we can fix this how we can fix this a very quick and very easy way to fix this is to use let over here Okay, so if I use a let over here, you already know what let will do. Let has a what? Block scope, right? So when I say let has a block scope, that means for each and every loop iteration, right? So whenever every time loop runs, this i is a new variable altogether. Okay, it is a new copy of i altogether. And each time set timeout is run, this callback function has a new copy of i with it its own identity of i with it let me first run you run and show it to you that it works okay many of you might not believe it so <laughs> see it runs why you know because these let variables are block scoped right so each and every this time this loop is called right each and every time the set timeout method is called this function forms a closure with a new variable itself okay that means this copy of i in each iteration is new okay so that means if we do a i plus plus here so i is equals to 2 is a new copy of variable which forms a closure with this function okay set timeout what it will do set timeout will take this function now this function has a new copy of um, i bound to it which has value 2 and send it okay and saves it and similarly when the i goes to 3 it it forms a closure with i is equals to 3 which is a fresh variable in itself okay fresh new copy of i and it like saves it and similarly it like keeps on doing it keeps on doing it and it makes five copies of this variable i and they form closure with each and every function so in simple term, you can assume that each and every time this function is called, it is, it is referring to different memory location, which is their individual i, uh, separate copy of i, which were in the scope. Okay. So why was it not working with var and why it is working with let? The only difference is that let is block scoped and it creates a new copy every time this loop is executed. But you know, some of the smart interviewers, very smart interviewers, they will say that, no, you can't use let. You have to use var. Now you are confused, right? Now what you will do? Now again, only closures will help you. Okay. Closures will help you with this. And you can like, without even writing let, you can do and perform the same thing because you already know why this is happening. So, it, is hap it was happening like it was not working with var just because this the copy of this i right this copy of this i refers to the same memory location so somehow we have to give a new copy of i every time right to this set timeout and forms a closure with it okay so for that what we can do if we want to fix it with using var over here so what we can do we can form a closure okay so clearly see this pay very attention you like it it might be confusing for you initially but i'll show you so what we will do is we will create a function okay let's call it close let's call it close okay we will enclose this set timeout inside this function okay let us take this so what we have to do is we want to kind of have a new copy of i each and every time this loop is executed like that is what was working with let right uh, so what we will do is we wrap this wrap this set timeout inside this close function pay attention very carefully so we wrap this set timeout inside this close function and we somehow have to supply this i every time with a new copy of i Right? How we can do that? 
we can just call this close function with an i okay so if i do a i over here okay and if i pass in i here and if i run it like this so it works why it will work because every time you call this close function with this i it creates a new copy of i for itself over here okay uh, i know these are these are a lot of i's that might be confusing to you but you can assume this to be like this somewhat like this okay so these are like this so these two code have no difference it's like this okay so basically what we did is so we just identified that problem that that pr problem was because it was referring to the same memory space now using closures using this close function we kind of created a new copy of i or a new copy of x every time this set timeout was called okay so every time this set timeout callback function is like stored in a separate memory and like attach the timer right it stores so it remembers a new copy of x every time this close function is called it like has a new copy of i in it okay so uh, that is how it is and that is how you can make this work so next time if you find something like this so don't just pull your head and hate javascript but understand how it beautifully works behind the scenes okay how you can make closures work for you not against you you know while coding how you can make closures work for you like understanding how these things are working you don't get into this this is a very corner case you don't get run into these problems very often but this is important to know okay how things are working behind the scenes if you know internally you won't hate javascript but you will love it i know it is too much for this video so that's all in this video and in the next video we will be covering an important example of closures you know i saw in the comment somebody wrote that we, if suppose an interviewer is asking for a good example of closure what can we give so in the next a video i'll show you a good example of closures which will make your foundations more strong you will remember closures for your life before moving on to that video give this video a thumbs up it motivates me a lot and till next time thank you for watching namaste javascript